Well, hi everybody, it's Rusty again, and uh, today I'm gonna go over a topic that I covered once before on one of my earliest videos when I was just starting out. Enough things have happened since then that I think it's worth revisiting it, and that is, what are the do's and don'ts on the trail? So it's gonna be a bit of a soapbox. I hope you'll bear with me. So this uh, video, like I said, similar to another one I did called The Unwritten Rules of uh, Hiking the AT, uh, but just based on things I've observed since then. Some of it will be a repeat, but uh, some of it will be new. So I'm just going to go through a bunch of topics, uh, sort of at random. First of all, privies. Uh, privies are out there for our convenience, you know, where they're available. That sure beats uh, digging a cat hole. And, and, and the modern ones are actually very good. They're usually moldering privies, which means, um, you know, you, you take care of business and you throw some mulch or some dry leaves or something over it. That's the flushing. And, um, you know, maybe a, a separate video will, will cover uh, everything involved with that. So the do on that is to follow the posted rules. Some of them say, you know, try uh, avoiding getting too much liquid in there, which means for you guys, you know, go off into the woods to uh, do number one. Um, but uh, they, you know, make sure that you do put in the, the mulch uh, when it's available. So it's important for these things to be able to, to, to work properly that you actually uh, go by the posted rules. And that means don't put trash in the privy. Nothing should go in there except for human waste in the toilet paper. Um, no feminine hygiene products, no candy wrappers, because what that does is not only does it slow down the decomposition, but that means that somebody has to actually sift through it and take that stuff out. And, and that's, you know, not a pleasant job. Uh, with these moldering privies, um, they actually do compost into uh, pretty good dirt after things are, are broken down and we want them to work right. So when it comes to noise, um, you know, when you're out there, please, please use your indoor voice, as my son Stumbledore calls it. Um, no reason to shout to somebody who's a few feet away. I, I've been walking through the serenity and the solitude of the woods um, just to, to hear, you know, loud people uh, breaking the silence. Um, don't blast music. I was on my... Uh, my long section hike this year and there was a scout troop coming the other way and they were blasting music i could hear them a quarter of a mile away literally a quarter of a mile away and of course don't shout to your friends that's kind of the converse of use your indoor voice there's there's no reason to be be shouting out there it, it, it's it's very disturbing um if there's alcohol well if you're going to drink at all drink responsible uh responsibly um, I happen to be a teetotaler, so this is not an issue uh, for me, but, you know, I, far be it from me to uh, tell somebody they can't enjoy, a, you know, a, a beer or, or whatever out there. Um, don't drink to excess and don't drink where prohibited. For example, it's prohibited, I believe, up on the top of Mount Katahdin. Um, you know, uh, I was uh, hiking in, uh, in Pennsylvania and there was a guy who had not even on the trail he, he was on the trail at the time but he had uh, gone on a drinking binge uh, at one of the nearby towns and by the time I passed by him he was like laying down saying he wanted to go home uh, in the middle of a trail I found his hiking buddy so he was taken care of um, this was somebody who it was definitely a drinking the the hiking buddy confirmed that dogs if you're going to bring a dog with you um, keep your dog under control. Uh, please have, you know, don't bring a dog that's not well behaved. Uh, one of the um, nicest compliments I ever got was I was in this um, uh, this shelter here on the right. That is the uh, uh, Goddard shelter on Mount Glastonbury. And there were 14 of us one night in that. It was pouring out. 
And in the morning when we uh, when we got up, my dog Rosemary got up and she shook herself. She wasn't wet. It wasn't like she was getting everybody around her wet. But you know how dogs do. They get up and they shake themselves like Jags Dingo and uh, Jingle and they, you know, they, they, uh, they start to stretch. And the guy next to me who had been next to me for like the whole night looked over and said, I didn't even know you had a dog with you. And that's really what you're aiming for. Your dog being so quiet and so well behaved that uh, it, you know, People crammed into a shelter don't even realize that she's there. Um, you know, bury its dropping. Some places say, oh, you got to carry it out. Well, I mean, you know, if, if, if you have to go to the bathroom and there's not a privy available, you, you do a cat hole. Well, with your dog, you can do the same thing. Just just bury it. Um, and and I, I, I personally believe that's enough. Um, don't allow it to disturb others. Again, we go back to the story about my dog was so quiet, people didn't even realize she was there. And don't allow it to eliminate near water sources. Um, I was fortunate in that uh, Rosemary was trained to get off the trail and into the woods, but that doesn't mean she knew anything about water sources. So um, just uh, you know, watch out for that. Also, it, it's it, that's no better as far as other hikers are concerned than uh, having a dead deer carcass in, in a water supply. Um, tents and hammocks um, set up in established campgrounds only in or campsites i probably uh, could say um and that doesn't mean you can't do stealth camping i mean here's a picture of a stealth site uh but once a stealth site is established it's best to continue to use it in that area because that at least uh focuses the the environmental impact into a particular area so if you're going to stealth camp find an established stealth camp avoid starting a new one if you can um, use platforms when they're available a lot of times tent platforms are actually there to protect uh, you know fragile uh, wetlands um, uh, sometimes they're not sometimes they're just one of the available options but i always use a platform if, if i can get one um, don't set your tent up in a shelter now there was one circumstance where somebody did have a hammock hanging up in a shelter it was a very rainy days and even the hikers other hikers may have helped him put it up he wasn't taking up any floor space so that was fine but uh, setting up a tent in a shelter is like the height of uh, trail uh, rudeness um, hygiene just for your own benefit brush and floss your teeth at least uh, daily uh, clean your hands with sanitizers and use uh, environmentally friendly soap but still do it away from streams just because it's a environmentally friendly biodegradable soap doesn't mean you want to be anywhere near a stream always get away from a stream if you're going to use it don't shake hands with other people don't share uh, common food uh, those are just ways of spreading viruses and again these all these are for your own protection except for the one about the uh, using the soap away from the streams the rest are if you break these rules uh, you're the one who's going to uh, pay the price for it um, litter please pack everything out um, don't use something being biodegradable as an excuse in other words like an orange peel is biodegradable but it's a, not a natural thing and it takes quite a while especially if you're above tree line um, this has been a problem I guess on Mount Monadnock people thinking oh just throw the uh, orange peel out or banana peel out uh, to the bugs and, and no that's that's just uh, garbage so don't use that as an excuse you don't use receptacles not intended for trash now here is a bear box and here's a privy and you'll see this is a picture that i showed you before um, that barrel in the privy is not a trash barrel it's quite clearly marked that that is a um that is where the mulch goes like i said with the moldering privies you you use use the mulch now the reason this has come up recently because uh, crazy boonies and i were hiking in the green mountains and we stopped at that shelter, that Goddard shelter I mentioned, and the bear box there had about, I don't know, four people's worth of trash. I mean, trash that four different people, because you could tell the way it was laid out, had left behind. Now, that's four out of the thousands that have gone by, but that's all it takes. I mean, it was like, there's trash out here in the woods. Somebody's got to pack it out. In this case, uh, Crazy Boonies uh, packed up a trash bag and hauled all that stuff out. Um, not... Uh, in a sense, not our responsibility to do that, but in another sense, it's everybody's responsibility to take it out. Unfortunately, they're just that that small minority uh, have an impact, and that's just you know if if I could have uh, caught them, I would have dope slapped them. But by the nature of the 
the trash that was left, they did not actually seem to be uh, regular long distance hikers. I mean, it was just weird stuff, uh, makeup and stuff like that, that uh, normally you wouldn't uh, bring on a hike. Um, and also don't burn your trash in most cases, um, unless it's absolutely pure paper, I guess. Um, but uh, a lot of wrappings and stuff actually has like tin foil inside it and stuff like that. You're just plan on taking out everything that you bring in. Um, the only time I'd say to burn it is if you're using it actually as tinder to start a fire and it is paper or something of that sort, maybe cardboard. Um, when it comes to the environment, you know, practice leave no trace. There's a lot of videos online. Look up leave no trace. A lot of the park services have those kind of videos. Hike on hard surfaces whenever, in other words, if you're going across a rocky ledge, stay on the ledge because those are the areas that seem to really have um, very fragile plant life. Um, don't litter or paint. You can see some instances here. Vandalization of trees. I, I've joked in the past that somebody drew a rocket ship on this tree. Um, don't even dump food or feel the wildlife, feed the wildlife. And especially, um, don't uh, step on vegetation and here's a, a picture of some rather fragile uh, vegetation. So why do we do all this or why do I insist on this? Well, we have a responsibility for, you know, we have responsibility to other hikers. Those people who left the trash in the, in the bear box uh, were not being respectful of the other hikers who had to deal with it. Um, of course, future generations, uh, we start trashing the outdoors and it's just not gonna be there for much longer. Uh, if it's going over private land, landowners are going to close it off to hiking. Um, it's going to attract uh, pests, uh, wildlife, and uh, in many cases, uh, like bears, sometimes have to be destroyed because they become uh, nuisances at, at the camps. And of course, we have a responsibility to ourselves. Um, I look forward to the day that I can be up here like Mike was um, at Mount Katahdin, uh, at the summit of Mount Katahdin. And, uh, you know, I would really, it would really kind of ruin it if I got up there and it was a, a, a trash heap. So this is why we really got to, um, you know, follow these do's and don'ts. Thanks for listening.